dear students we are now moving to the second part of our lecture series in the first lecture we learned what is the basic difference between a conventional financial system and an islamic financial system in that lecture we said that an islamic financial system is there to ensure that all transactions which are taking place in the financial markets are conforming to certain sharia norms or certain rules which have been set by islam in this lecture we will highlight or we will talk about two of the major rules or norms of islamic financial system although the module or the lecture in the module talks about almost all relevant rules here because of the shortage of time we are only highlighting major two norms of islamic finance first we will talk about the prohibition of riba the word riba is an arabic word which appeared in many places in the quran and you know that the sources of law in islam are basically two one is the quran itself and the other is the hadith or the tradition of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now the word riba has appeared in many places in the quran the quran or the god himself has categorically prohibited riba in at least eight verses in eight different verses obviously the module records all these verses and you can also check it at your own home by opening the quran itself however here i am going to give you just one example from the quran in surah al baqarah allah is saying a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim alladhina ya'kuluna ar riba la yaqumuna illa kama yaqumu alladhi yatakhabbatuhu ash shaitanu min al masi dhalika bi annahum qalu innama al bay'u mithlu ar riba واحل الله البيع وحرم الربا فمن جاءه موعظه من ربه فانتهى فله ما سلف وامره الى الله ومن عاد فاولئك اصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون يمحق الله الربا ويربي الصدقات ان والله لا يحب كل كفار اثم صدق الله العظيم what allah is saying here is very simple you can check it at your home in any translation right Allah is saying that on the day of judgment you will see some people who are standing uh with uh, a an appearance which seems that they are very much unstable and they are shivering not stable when wh- while they are standing so people will look at them and they will say that why they are unstable right why uh they cannot stand properly on their own then the god will say, the god will say that these are the people who in the world used to live on riba they used to transact transact with each other on the basis of riba but god has prohibited riba and legitimized or allowed trade to take place but they used to say that basically riba and trade or buy and sale of a good is the same thing but unfortunately god has prohibited riba and allowed trade to take place now once this message has reached to you and you have stopped dealing in riba then please leave the matter with god himself allah will take care of it whatever you have done before but if you return to the riba based transactions again then look god in very clear terms is admonishing is warning you that you will live in the hell forever and allah will not bless the increase in your wealth as long as it is coming from riba based transaction and he will bless your transaction which is based on uh, riba free transactions so this is what he is basically uh, said in the quran now this is not my words right that's why i first uh, uh, what is called cited 
the Quranic verse in original Arabic so that you understand the purity or originality of the verse. So what we get the message from this uh, yeah, Quranic verse? It is very simple that riba is prohibited, finished. So as long as you are Muslim and your taste is according to the rules and norms set by the Quran, you have to be very much concerned about transactions that are taking place in a financial market, whether those transactions are taking place according to the rules and norms of Quran and the Sunnah. This prohibition of riba also appears in Hadith. Prophet ﷺ very categorically has prohibited riba in many instances. So, we, because we are in short of time, we cannot basically give you all the examples from Quran and Hadith. You are requested to go through the relevant lecture of the module and you will see that those uh, citations are there. Now, uh, let me explain what is this riba. As I said, riba, the word itself, is coming from the Arabic origin which basically means increase. The closest English um, synonym of riba can be interest which is very much commonly known in our society. If we look at uh, different financial transactions, they are mostly based on interest. As an example, we can cite the case of bank products, right, like savings account, fixed deposit accounts, right, loans that we take from the bank and all these things. These are all based on interest. So, what is interest? Interest is very simply the excess amount of money which we receive over and above the principal which has been borrowed, right. So, if a saver lends his or her money to a borrower, there is a condition attached to this contract which says that after a certain period or at a certain interval the borrower has to give something excess in addition to the original amount which is the principal. So, very simply speaking, interest is interest which is very much common in our society. So, we do not have any uh, ambiguity as long as interest is concerned. Okay. Now, what we have learned so far is that Quran and Hadith, in other words Islam has prohibited interest. What can we do? We still need to, we still need to uh, transact with each other financial products and services. We are all in need of financial products and services. However, we are not allowed, as long as Muslims are concerned, they are not allowed to enter into a transaction where there is some condition of interest. Right, the essence of what we have said so far is very simple as long as our financial system is concerned. When we enter into a transaction, the transaction has to be free from all aspects of interest. Now, because this course is on Islamic banking and insurance, we have to learn this thing first before we move to explain what is Islamic banking and what is insurance because in both of the cases we will see later on that there is no involvement of interest. In other words, we design banking products under Islamic banking framework and insurance product under Islamic insurance framework. We design products in such a way that they are free from all types of interest. Okay. So, when we enter into any financial transaction, it should be free from interest and also when we exchange debt for debt, when we buy and sell debt itself, sometimes in the financial market we see, see that an amount of debt is exchanged for another amount of debt. Now, according to the prohibition of riba, this exchange of two debts has to be in equal amount. You cannot right, vary the amount of exchange in these two 
uh, debts. For example, if I owe somebody one hundred dollar, and somebody else owes one hundred dollar to me, and I want to exchange these two debts, then it has to be in equal amount, right? It cannot be discounted, which is very much common in today's banking business. Sometimes, owner of a financial product can sell, right? Can sell his or her uh, financial certificate at a discounted rate, rate to a bank. A bank buys that financial certificate at a less value than the face value, which is equivalent to interest. And it, commercial banks very much know it. So, there is no uh, problem there. They are basically, uh, they are thinking that this is legitimate. Well, conventional financial system allows this type of buy and sell, but as long as Islamic financial system is concerned, it is not allowed. Okay. Let us move to another important uh, concept, in, uh, which is very much related to this discussion, which is the time value of money. Now, when we say that prohibition of interest is very much there within the Islamic financial framework, it does not necessarily mean that there is no time value of money in Islam. There is time value of money. So, money today can be preferred to money tomorrow. And this is reflected in, a, in an example when we right, can price two different transactions on the basis of different natures of the transaction. For example, the difference between spot price and credit price. If I am selling a book to somebody else and if I charge 200 taka for this book as long as the buyer is buying it now on spot, the same book can be sold to somebody else in a separate contract, obviously not in the same contract. In a separate contract, this price can be quoted differently if the buyer wants to buy it later on deferred payment on credit. So, the same book can be sold at 300 taka if the transactions are separate. As long as these two transactions are separate, the seller can quote different prices for the same book in order to take care of time value of money. However, once the transaction is completed, in other words, once you sell the book on deferred payment on credit at 300 taka, you cannot increase or decrease the price. That is the right essence of uh, prohibition of riba. Okay. Before we move to the second major norm of Islamic finance, the last important thing to understand is the difference between interest and few other things, few other concepts which are very much relating to financial activities. One of them is profit. Is there any difference between profit and interest? Yes, it is. They are different. There is difference between, um, between profit and interest. Interest is normally part of cost of capital, but profit is not. Profit is known only after realization, right? That is why if you fix after investment, if you fix a return for yourself, that cannot be termed as profit, that is basically interest. So, interest is arising from a loan or a debt transaction and profit is arising from buying and selling of goods and services, which is the difference between total sale or total revenue on the one hand and the total cost on the other hand. So, profit is the difference between total revenue and total cost. Another important thing is to understand the difference between rent and interest. Look, when you rent a house, you pay certain amount of money which is fixed. So, you may think that because I am paying something fixed, it may be interest. It is not because what you are doing here is basically you are paying for something 
which is different from interest in the case of interest. In case of interest, you are receiving money as borrowing from somebody and you are paying or repaying that money back to the original uh, lender in money. So, this is money for money transaction. So, in case of money for money transaction, if you pay something extra above the original amount, that is basically interest according to the general practice what we normally know. And in case of rent, what we see, we are paying the price of what price of using a certain space my home, I am living in a home and I pay the rent of the house where I am living in. So, this is not money for money transaction, this is the money for use of home transaction or money for use of the space transaction. So, these two are different. Again, when we see a doctor, we pay fees which can be fixed. Again, look say 300, 400 taka, whatever it is, this is fixed in advance. Obviously, that is not interest because here you are buying something, you are paying the price of the service you are receiving. However, in case of interest again, we are basically exchanging the same thing which is money for money. Now, I think it should be clear to you that whatever is fixed does not necessarily mean that that is interest. What I am trying to tell you is that it is the interest which is prohibited. So, when designing a financial product, we have to be very careful that this is free from interest, that is it. This is the first right, requirement of the Islamic financial system of which Islamic bank and Islamic insurance companies are only part. Now, we move to the second part of our this lecture in which we explain the second major norm of Islamic finance which is the prohibition of gharar. The word gharar is again coming from Arabic which starts with not English letter G but the Arabic letter Ghain from your deep throat right Ain and Ghain. Okay, what is gharar? Gharar can be defined as the excessive uncertainty in any transaction. So, if any transaction includes very much uncertain elements then the transaction is uh, called to contain gharar and this is not allowed in Islam again. Few examples will clarify the existence of gharar. For example, when people sell fruits before their appearance which is very much common in our country, we sell mango trees, mango fruits before the actual appearance of mangoes themselves. This is a classical example of gharar. What does it mean? What you are selling basically? You are selling mangoes, but the mangoes have not appeared in the trees. So, this is an example of horror in which we see that we are selling something which is not present yet. So, this type of transaction has been very much prohibited by the Prophet Also, in some instances the Quran denounces this type of transaction. So, the module talks about what is gharar in detail including many examples. We try to summarize what we have so far learned. The very much important condition to design a product in order to conform, in order to make it conform to Islamic Sharia is elimination of interest from a transaction. So, any financial transaction cannot contain elements of interest. Second, the financial transaction at hand cannot also contain gharar. Now, there are some other elements which have to be there in order to make it a purely Islamically acceptable or legitimate contract and I hope that in the course of our uh, next lectures, these other aspects will be clear to you. I will request at the end to you to go through relevant lecture at your home, at your own time and pace and things will be very clear because these are not very much difficult.
probably these are not very much common around us. That's why things may be appearing difficult to you. Thank you very much for your patience in listening this lecture. Thank you.